All right, quiet on the set here. Let's get serious here. Here we go. You guys ready over here, Wicker Leon? All right, let's go. This is episode number 30 of the Stone Roadie Show with my new co-host, Kathy Godsey. All right, here we go. Ready? Action. Welcome to the Stone Roadie Show. I'm Kathy Godsey. This is Stone Roadie Show with Craig Reed. And Griff Martin is gone now because he's a jerk. And the show is up and coming now. And you need a fresh face. <laughs> My hair messed up, Craig. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had a we had a we had a lot of comments about Kathy Godsey taking over for for Griff and uh, saying you got to get rid of that <laughs> that jerk and and uh, she's a lot prettier to look at you know so we we <laughs> while I was on yeah. vacation we, we 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 would crack on that yeah you know this is episode number thirty. And uh, Griff's done every single one of them. I, I, I think I, uh, before we started doing multiples with, uh, with uh, uh, Mitch, Mitch Scooby, my former bus driver, and Mark Frank, the plane crash survivor, and and uh, uh, Mark Howard, the plane crash survivor, and then Kenny Peden, another airplane crash survivor, and. Uh, and oh my gosh, who else have we had on here? As, well, as oh, and then G and then Gene Odom was was on, you know, with Kathy Godsey, uh, and uh, they told her her story about how she, she first ran into Gene and 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 then got to meet Alan Collins and and uh, we had and, Dwayne Easley on Dwayne Easley from the Monument. He was on and. That's when somebody came in and started complaining about talking about the the plane crash, and and they said, you know, you shouldn't talk about the plane crash because it's upsetting me. And Dwayne said, well, who are you and where were you when it happened, right? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but uh, I think Griff, I, I noticed he was. He was posting some stuff on Facebook about doing a little venting on some kind of a situation that, uh, that concerned concerned Kathy Godsey about when when uh, somebody was commenting. Yeah, well, you go ahead and tell the story. Yeah, yeah. we there's a, a a person in the comments on the YouTube, and I've been just ignoring it, but they don't think I know who they are. And their username is Freebird Family, and I know who that is, and I won't say their name, but uh, JM is the initials, and don't think I don't know who you are, because I do. <laughs> and she's pretty much just an angry person, and she calls me a jerk and all of this stuff, but the reality of it is I'm friends with Gene Odom, and she doesn't like Gene Odom. And uh, Gene kind of caught her in a little lie uh, when it came to some something that happened at the Freebird Cafe. She tried to sue Judy. And, and then when she brought uh, her lawyer to Gene to get the story, Gene said, uh, well, actually, it was Judy's lawyer that Gene said, hey, I got a picture of her playing a guitar with her hurt hand. But we're going to get Gene on here and, and get him to tell the story. So... Anyway, yeah, as far as me being a jerk, you know, I might be a jerk or whatever, but everything I do here, you know, I volunteer. And I was just going to kind of tell the story, Craig, about how I got involved with Leonard Skinner, you know? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been we've been talking about that. Yeah, me and Kathy Godsey have been talking about like, that. Like, uh, like, like, like her, she's how she got involved in, liking Leonard Skinner. I don't remember if she ever told the story, but she told me that she first got introduced with Leonard Skinner and she had an older brother and she would go downstairs when he was gone and put on his headphones and lay on the floor and listen to Leonard Skinner while he wasn't there, you know, and that's how she got 
got uh, got situated with it. And yeah, there's other people. Kathy Keeble, you know, she's she's a because uh, we 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 started this like for, for the for the Facebook crowd and our fake book crowd. And I, I realized that a lot of YouTubers have, have started to pick up, pick up on the stone roadie show, but yeah, we could, we, I, I just kind of started this uh, uh, answering questions on fake book to, to, to fans and, 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 and stuff. People wanted me to write a book, you know, and I just say, it's just fascinating the the people that have, a different story to tell about their involvement in Leonard Skinner and why they're still, still uh, so fanatic about a band that basically ceased to exist almost 50 years ago. You know, and, you know, we got the tribute band in there, you know, they're, they're, they're doing a good job to, to carry on the, the tradition, you know, like I said before, like, like Ronnie wanted, he always said that Johnny someday would sing my song. So to me, there's nothing weird about that whole situation, but I hear they're, they're fixing to retire pretty soon too. But like Kathy Keeble, she's got, she came up to, I took her to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, her and her granddaughter. And I just had the best time with her granddaughter, Savannah, take her up there and going up in the in the in, in the uh, rock school of rock at the hall of fame and and going up there and, and picking up the bass and the guy that was up there uh, that was kind of the instructor up there noticed her right away she was dressed dressed like a rock star you know it was really cool and she was up there just finger picking and then uh, oh, here we go with one of those other hello <laughs> Hi, you won't believe who's on the Stone Roadie show on the phone. It's Kathy Godsey. <laughs> you're, you're, you're live on the Stone Roadie show. No, we can't hear you. Uh, she said hi, everywhere. Yeah, we're just talking about you. <laughs> Isn't that a hoot? Look, looky here. She said, looky here, looky here, looky here. <laughs> All right, Kathy, I, I'll call you back when I got the phone. Oh, she's, he, she can't hear you. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Craig, you know, I'd like to thank Kathy for taking my place. And while I was gone, she did a great job. Probably, you know, a lot easier on the eyes than me. And she will be back, right? We're going to have a Oh, yeah, on. yeah. We're, yeah, we talk. We talk all the time. And we, we mostly talk on, on Zoom, you know. And we get on and just talk on Zoom because... She's a teacher, and uh, she uses Zoom a lot in her in her teaching. So we just, you know, uh, and 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 it's funny, but the the way me and Griff kind of started, because when we started this, we didn't know what the heck. I didn't know what the heck we we're gonna do, you know. And I think we said, yeah, we're gonna do twelve shows, and we'll figure it out. <laughs> you know, this is the thirtieth one, you know. But you know, people say they, you know, they enjoy watching the show that. It, that I'm funny, you know, <laughs> you know, but, uh, yeah, we, we do our best, our best, I guess the best we can, but, um, in his yeah, opinion, yeah, my, my stone roadie t-shirt <laughs> that not many people have, <laughs> um, but where was I going? I, I had a, yeah, uh, well, basically how you and I met, you know, and how, uh, you know, I got involved. Yeah, go ahead with that story. Yeah, I, you know, I wasn't even like, you know, into the Skinner music. And, you know, what happened to me was I was riding my bicycle down the river road here in Coco and got ran over by a, a car and left for dead. And a jogger found me on the side of the road. And I woke up in the hospital with a major head injury and I had to get hip surgery and back surgery and shoulder surgery and all these things. And I was basically crippled in a chair for like four years. And then I, I was like, you know, thinking, how in the hell am I going to get out of this? And I saw a video with, with Gene Odom, who, you know, if you don't know Gene Odom, he was on the plane when it crashed and he was security for the band and best friends with Ronnie. And, um, and I was thinking to myself, how in the heck did this guy end up 
walking around after that plane crash acting like he was just fine i needed to figure out how he did that because i wanted to learn how he did it so i actually got a hold of of uh of gene just like kathy talks about you know what was that saying she has is i forget what some, it, some five uh things of i don't know something I don't yeah know. anyway if you, you want to <laughs> so do people the web yeah if you want to do something you can do it so i got a hold of gene and i started hanging around with him and he just inspired me and i went through a lot of pain but i kept moving because if you if you know gene gene's a moving target and and so um i kind of wanted to give back to to the to the uh leonard skinner band for getting me back on my feet and i painted this hell house painting uh because i'm an oil painter and i like to paint and um and i painted that hell house painting and then uh joe crimp who used to practice with the band and he was friends with all the guys in the band um growing up he used to uh uh have his own band and they shared it in hell house and he kind of uh showed me what the hell house looked like i would paint a little and then i would send him a picture and he'd go nah don't look right and then i would fix it and then he goes that's it that's it right so i i ended up giving him the painting because i thought you know well what a great guy and then uh that painting kind of went viral and it just ended up on posters and stickers and t-shirts and actually if you google hell house t-shirt leonard skinner you're gonna see about 18 different t-shirt companies that are stealing my art to this day making money off of it and uh what i do with it is i use that shirt uh to i get craig to sign it and gene to sign it and i'll auction it off and i'll like sell stickers and posters i'll donate the money to the monument i'll help out people like paul abraham and Gene Odom for his cause. And so, you know, it's all about, for me, giving back to Leonard Skinner. And through Gene, I met uh, Craig. Uh, I met uh, uh, all, a lot of other guys in the plane crash, Mark Howard, Mark Frank, you know, uh, uh, all the guys that uh, were down at the monument that were part of rescuing them off the plane. And but you, but how you and I got hooked up, Craig, was on Facebook. I didn't even know who you were. And and uh, I know Joe Crimp told me, he goes, we saw a fat girl at the bar. <laughs> and, and Joe goes, uh, I said, boy, that's a fat girl over there dancing. And Joe goes, yeah, Craig Reed would like that. You know, and I go, <laughs> is that the guy on Facebook makes fun of fat girls all the time? Yeah, yeah. And I said, well, who is that? He goes, well, man, he was the roadie for Leonard Skinner. I said, really? I, I go, everybody's always picking on that guy, you know, saying that is that he's selling stuff that isn't real on the that came off the plane. And I was like, that makes sense. Now I know who he is. And so I kind of started taking up for you. And there was this guy running a, a, a fan club. Um, I don't know if I should mention his name, Craig. Uh, John. Yeah. John's his name. <laughs> and he was just attacking Craig just relentlessly. And so I dug I up. Told him, I, I told him, I said, you better quit messing with me, man. Yeah, he what did. the hell? Just quit messing with me or you'll regret it. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And, and so I found a um, a thing on, on the internet uh, where he had a mug shot where he had done something really bad. Now, I wasn't there, but he was convicted of something. And so I gave it to uh, Craig's friend, John Neal. And I said, whatever you do, don't give this to Craig because I'm afraid what he's going to do with it. Right. And so the next morning I wake up and I get a call from Joe Crimp, you know, and if anybody knows Joe Crimp, he, he's got this raspy voice. Griff, Griff, you ain't going to believe what Craig Reed did. <laughs> And I was I'm like, what? He put that picture of John on Facebook. And I was like, oh, no. And that was the end of that guy on on uh, Facebook. 
the one whose fan. Oh, he's still, he still, he still roams around in there under another name. I heard. Yeah, and I donated, you know, a painting on his site, and uh, and you know, I donated a lot of stuff for him for his for his group of people and his fans to you know to to win contests and things like that. And he just wouldn't leave Craig alone. And Craig told him, "Hey, you know, you need to, you better stop." And so that's what happened with that. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, and now I look at the comments on uh, Craig's YouTube page there and I see that Griff is a jerk. Well, I know who who she is and she's just <laughs> a little upset because I'm friends with Jean and she hates Jean. And so, uh, you know, just so you know, Craig asked me to do this. I'm volunteering it, you know, uh, and and the purpose is Craig's got a lot of information that he's trying to get out because he's almost like the fifth Beatle, you know, you know, he didn't <laughs> play an instrument, but he traveled, ate, drank and slept with the band, you know, and uh, everywhere they went, he was. So, you know, for me to to be able to to be on here to help him with that and, you know, uh, pull up questions from from uh, fan sites and things to ask Craig and help him along with this. It's, it's an honor for me. And Craig asked me to do it. And that's why I'm here. Like me or not. Uh, I feel some, I feel almost some kind of an obligation, you know, to, to share, you know, what happened to me. Cause I'm kind of the same thing. They picked me up and it's kind of like a, you know, I was just picked me up off the street and all of a sudden I'm in the, with one of the most fa famous band rock bands ever. And it's just, it's an amazing story for me too. So I feel kind of, a, you know, when I got on Facebook, my son, Chad, he was going, why don't you get on Facebook? I go, I want nothing to do with Facebook, you know? And, and he goes, well, you know, they got those fan sites on there, that, you know, that are, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what went on and talking about it as well they'll figure it out you know <laughs> so i i i found i get on there and i i found the whole thing kind of amusing you know and i didn't really get involved with those fan sites i kind of didn't want to act like i was a know-it-all or whatever you know so i kind of cruised over there to see what they were talking about and and i would start to tell them well you know this is what i know about it and they well, who the hell are you? Uh, you know, and they, nobody, I don't know. And that one guy, John, you know, he was, that's where he started messing with me when, uh, you know, when I guess he was over there um, saying that he was a Leonard Skinner expert, you know, and I came in there and I was saying, no, that's not what happened. And I was blowing his cover or whatever. And yeah, he was involved with that Leonard Skinner mon monument thing out there at first. You know, he had everybody buffaloed to to who he was, and uh, and uh, uh, yeah, and then Craig had a, a a box of slides that were that they were uh, he kept on the plane because you know Steve and, and guys Gary Gary needed slides. And they were you and know, Steve, were, all Steve and picks and straight. Yeah, you know, and so he kept all, all that stuff, stuff on the plane. And you know, people said, "Well, he doesn't have a right to sell anything off that plane." Well, you know, he was on the plane. It wasn't like, you know, <laughs> you know, and and what gets me though, Craig is, you know, you guys all that were on that plane were basically left with so many injuries. And, you know, no way to make money after that, uh, really, uh, you know, and like Gene, he, he, Ronnie promised him, you know, hey, you're going to be the first security guard millionaire. Craig, you're going to be the first roadie millionaire. Well, you know, you guys were struggling your ass off. And it seems like every time you try to do something, somebody blocks you from it. You know, uh, these guys, Mark Howard, Mark Frank, uh, Craig, you know, and Gene and all the guys on that plane, you know, they, they're very humble guys, a lot of injuries and, you know, they're just trying to make it through life, you know, uh, and exist and why somebody would try to tell them they can't do something when they were involved directly with the band and on that plane just makes no sense to me. But in my opinion, 
do. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. It's just my opinion. So uh, that that's my story. And, you know, and I went off to the Keys on vacation. My, my great girlfriend, Suzanne, took me down there. We had a wonderful time. And uh, I got Craig a hat. There was a, a there was a crab stone crab place down there, and I and I saw this hat in there. I said I got to get this hat for Craig, so I wanted to show it on here before I put it in the mail to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, good. Yeah, Craig likes, I was going. Craig was likes gonna, gifts that nobody else has. Oh yeah, he's, he keeps wanting me to wear my. I got an airplane simulator over there and I like to dress up like an airplane pilot when I fly planes. So he, he, he got a way to get me a whole a captain's outfit with his shirt and a hat and everything. He keeps I wanting me to I wear it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to wear it. I'm going to wear it for our, our Halloween special. I'll be the airplane pilot. <laughs> yeah. I was, was telling Griff, I was telling Griff how, some of you have maybe seen me in my Superman outfit, you know, and on um, on on Facebook I have a picture of me and my ex-wife and my uh, my my first dog Leon, and we're all dressed up like Superman, and and then after Halloween we're standing in front of the Christmas tree like like Mister and Mrs. Superman and Super Dog. <laughs> we sent them out for Christmas cards. It was it was funny, but. That same Superman outfit every every year. I like to around uh, 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 Halloween. You know when you're when the parties are all starting and people have costume parties. I always get in my Superman outfit and go grocery grocery shopping. Like I'm going to buy you know go go I go buy a six pack of beer and some guacamole and some stuff you would take to a party. <laughs> and just go there just just uh be a spectacle yeah how know. about craig how about that time <laughs> uh you you and john neal and i was supposed to go with you but i had to fly out early uh and you and john neal and was a sammy went down to the go-kart yeah. race and craig yeah, wore I've his did, did, skull yeah. he wore his skull leather suit that he got from some race it's car fire driver suit, yeah. with a yeah. with a full face helmet <laughs> well, I had, the, I had the racing shoes, the gloves, the the a fire suit, and the whole thing. That's the same one I wore down when me and John Neal went down and drove uh, at Kentucky Speedway and drove the NASCAR cars. And I had the Dale Hernandez Jr.'s Budweiser car. Both of us went faster than anybody did all day. We went we went as fast as the cars would go. 155. We put them took them to the to the took them to the limit the limiter yeah we go blah, 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 the engine and quit and when you and john we were at that go-kart race and you came in number one and you said you had to give john some water because he got <laughs> overheated we had it we had a pretty good crash yeah i hit john broadside man <laughs> they came out and gave me so i think it rang his bell you know i mean him and sammy were racing and they they got tiled up, and I tried to come on the inside, and John was sideways, <laughs> and I hit him sideways pretty hard. <laughs> but anyway, Craig, remember we were talking before we started recording, and and uh, every now and then, Craig he'll he'll uh, start talking about something he doesn't think's interesting, and and I was and I asked him, I said, what was it like? when you were in the recording studio with those guys and they were recording albums and stuff, what was it that you did? What was the atmosphere in there? You know? And then Craig started telling me about it. And then I said, well, hold on, don't say any more. Let's wait till we get on the podcast and then you can share it with the people. So, so what, when it, Craig, whenever you went in and they recorded, do you remember what the first thing, they recorded was when you were involved when you were well, there. i i went in for the second for second album so second helping but that's when i had just started and they they told me my, that my job designation was going to be the a drum roadie which you know i didn't know so I, joe barnes basically and kevin had had to train me to do it or or you know or bob bob burns his health i don't really actually remember who but i well I, I don't remember bob 
showing me much about it, you know, but he'd come in and tweak them, you know, but, uh, but in the studio I, for that at record, I didn't do nothing. I mean, to, as far as technical with, with anything and I, and I wasn't in charge of doing anything. I really wasn't, you know, I, Kevin and Joe did everything and I well, just, I played pinball the whole time. What was that <laughs> process like when you saw them, you know, was it just like take after take? And then did you remember any of the songs that they were playing or anything like that? Well, you know, Ed had hired me kind of, Ed had kind of hired me. So we went over to Mike Porter's and uh, me and Ed, because I was kind of hanging around with him went over to Mike Porter's and he had a little studio over there and they, they recorded, um, I need you the, the basic track to it. You know, it was Mike Porter played drums and then Ed could play bass or guitar. Or whatever. So they put down a basic track and really all he had, Ed had was a name for a song, but he had the whole instrumental thing done. So, you know, I had, I, I had watched Ed and Mike Porter put that together in the, in Mike Porter's basement, you know, and then, and then I, we went to back to the studio and Ed handed that tape to Ronnie and Ronnie listened to it. And as I remember, it wasn't 20 minutes till Ronnie came back with all the words to that song. Wow. I mean, and I don't think they've ever, they were ever changed. I mean, he just, he listened to it. He went, you know, I woke up the earliest morning and the sun comes shining down. I found me wishing, hoping, mama, you could be around because you know I need you more than the air I breathe. And I'm just trying to tell you, mommy, what you mean to me? Ooh, baby, I love you. <laughs> What more can I say? <laughs> Did, didn't you say, Craig, that you you hated Sweet Home Alabama? You got sick. Oh, I thought that was hokey, man. You know, yeah, that was one of the I songs. Had Tuesday's that, you know, Gone. You hated Tuesday's Gone, too, right? No, Tuesday's Gone was just kind of slow because, you know, you know, I was just, I was a kid off the street. They picked me up, you know, and I like free bird and I like, you know, all the, you know, right. the upstep ones, you know, and, you know, they were doing crossroads and, and stuff like that back then. You but know. that sweet so, yeah, Alabama, was, you hate Alan, you know, I, I told Alan, man, I said, man, you play crossroads better than that clapped and ever thought about it. He goes, yeah, but he played it first, you know, and that always stuck with me, you know, that was really cool. But, um, uh, that, yeah, in the studio, and then and then um, and then I started uh, after I became better with guitars, and then later after I was a drum roadie or a drum roadie, then I was a guitar roadie. So then the 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 last albums, the last few albums, a couple of few that they did, I was the only roadie that went to the studio with them. And because I was, I, I could put together the piano or put together the drums or the, do the guitars or whatever needed done. But mostly I just went and, and kept the, the beer, the beer coolers cold and the snacks or whatever, you know, depending on what kind of, where, what studio we were, you know, whether they had coolers or they had refrigerators, you just can't keep everything you know like they're at home you know like they go they can get water or juice or make a sandwich or whatever they want to do it's just you know the studio it's, it's basically like you know you're just you're there recording but the facility is set up to you know so every camp buddy can't be recording at once so they have they most of them like record plant you know, they're set up like an entertainment center you know like i said with the first record i i played pinball but God, I played pinball with that uh, uh, courtship of Eddie's father, that little kid, that oh, little yeah, black haired kid. Yeah, he that, he man. came in. I played pinball with him for, for a lot, you know, a lot of times. But you know, the, the the Eagles were there, you know. So I played. We all played pinball together, you know. You know, on the machine, you played players, you know. So uh, Wotan, Odin, and the Fire Gods. That was the name of that pinball machine we played. Wotan, Odin, and the Fire Gods. And yeah, we all we all played.
pinball on that pinball machine. Yeah, and and going. we were talking too, Craig, about how you actually met every single one of the Beatles except George Harrison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I met, uh, you know, I met uh, John Lennon there at the record plant. I went and had a little brunch or breakfast or whatever you call it. And then John Le uh, Paul McCartney was uh, out in um, 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 uh, Edward. Uh, Edward. <laughs> Edward. Edward. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, Ringo. Uh, it was Ringo's like house. I think I think we were with Cooter Al Cooper. And he just, it's in Belvedere Hills, and he pulled up into the house, and I, and I guess, I, I, I was probably high, you know, <laughs> back then there was quaaludes and stuff, you know, so I don't remember much about it. I remember there was a woman there, I guess that was that block, Angela Bach chick or something. Barbara Bach, yeah. Barbara Bach, yeah, but we, we kind of invaded him, and then we just kind of went in, and, and it was like, hi, bye, you know, we weren't there very long that I remember. But that's not bad to be able to meet, you know, all the Beatles except for one. Well, yeah, that, that's what's funny, you know, because like I said, Kathy Godsey, you know, she's, She's kind of almost famous now in New York, New Jersey because she she actually went to Alan Collins's house, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and people she'll go places and it, 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 it's funny, you know. It's like, but it, it, people I talked to a lot of people that you actually knew Ronnie, man. What was he like, you know? And it's just amazing the the the. The way people look at those people, you know, I mean, they were the most down to earth people and still are. Gary, he's a great guy, man. He's just, just, you know, <laughs> you know, he's, you know, but all of them were, all of the Skinner were really great guys, man. They were, all of them were. And when they were in the studio, you said you were a guitar tech. So did you tune their guitars up for their sessions when they recorded? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so it depends on which one. Like you know, it's all of them. All I would I would get them ready, and you know, and but they they would go in there and fine tune them. You know, to you know, um, they were mo mostly pretty right. But you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know. <laughs> that was that was uh didn't you with second helping and and that when basically when you first started hanging with them was it or was it the first time? second helping yeah but like i said i didn't really that you know that was we were in the studio that whole time and we went and did the hard rock cafe and that was really the first time that i set the drums up at the hard rock cafe that was like the first show we did at the sunset strip and I set them up in the wrong place, you know, and it, Kevin and Joe just laughed at me, you know. <laughs> I felt like a fool, you know. But, well, I think. Yeah, that was the first. I set them up in the wrong place. Yeah, it was, uh, they kept you around country. for entertainment, probably, Craig. <laughs> but you could ask Joe. I, 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 I became a, I, I became a really good drum roadie, yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I you know, I. The, the the setup that Artemis had, you know, it was like I, I'm I'm the one that kind of designed the the riser, and then he had the whole the the Slingerland uh, kit was like seven ply, you know, ma maple, and and uh, you know, and um, um, you know, put put the same maple finish of the drums had wood panels that went around the riser it was all like and then and then, and then we went to pv and he had his own monitor system back behind him for the drums and his own mixer <laughs> yeah it became quite yeah quite the setup yeah he yeah god he kicked that bass drum and it, it, your hair would fly <laughs> <laughs> he had his own monitors back there. Yeah. That story that you were telling me about Alan Collins with the uh, guitar in the uh, down there uh, at the at Alan's at that studio uh, behind the um, the muffler shop over there, Craig, and it got the dent in it. Did you already tell that story? Which one was that? That the uh, story about when it, the guitar Alan's Explorer was stuck to the guitar stand. 
some guy called me and said he's got a friend named George who oh, oh. I uh I got t multiple TVs in here and I just turned off my monitor I was trying to turn up the uh, volume on this this one here here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I got to turn this volume down on this other TV. Technical difficulty, dead air. Dead air space with the stone roadie. <laughs> I got... I got we, we had like a lot of problems to starting this podcast. I had a lightning strike. And then my camera went out, and then, you know, it's all because cause Craig was prepping for the show. <laughs> I got three I got three Samsung TVs in this room, and the, when you hit the remote, they all, <laughs> you know, so I was trying to turn the volume up on this one, and, I, and it came up on that one, so I had to. Yeah, so back to that story about the guitar <laughs> guitar stand, Craig, over there at the studio. Oh, yeah, the guy called me, and he, he says, boy, the guy got a good guy that, and we're looking for human interest stories. Like I said, like, you know, like everybody that's, that has met Skinner, everybody's got a little different story to tell. So he said that, yeah, he said he, uh, like Kathy Godsey, he, he just kind of stopped in and at the, um, at the uh like she did at, at leonard skinner's uh reality place and uh, she um and um he just stopped in at jacobs where the uh, uh alan collins band uh rehearsal studio was at, at first but they had the uh, rushington collins thing there but then they had it down there but he still had an office down there he was like the band's manager Washington Collins and Alan Collins. But anyways, he I kind of remember when he had that explorer down there sitting on a stand. But this guy told me the story about he went down there and stopped in there and that guitar was sitting there on the stand and he asked Larkin if he could play it. And Larkin said, yeah. And he picked it up off the stand and he said it had been there so long that it stuck to the guitar stand and he dropped it and put a ding in it and that the ding that he put in it is is reincarnated in in the replica guitar that they made of the the explorer i guess the ding that he put in it when he dropped it is in that replica <laughs> i don't know because you know, Gary's uh, Bernice, they, they redid that one too. And it, I think there was a cigarette burn in it that was, uh, that was replicated. You know, it was all, you know, it was a, to, uh, to back our, our sunburst, you know, cherry sunburst and, and, um, it faded over the years, you know? And, uh, so they just made it like that. It was almost faded out and put the scratch, all the scratches and, yeah, when they make a replica, it's exactly how they get it, or you know. So his ding became a replica. Of the famous, I guess. It, yeah, they, I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to the guy because I asked Mike Sparks if he remembered that, and because he was taking guitars, taking care of guitars back then, I was kind of like me and Larkin had that office down there, but. I think that was after I left when that, all that happened. I, I left Florida at that time. I left Florida in 92, I guess it was. Yeah, 92, close to 93. I left yeah, so those are kind of cool stories. And, and, and we're going to get people like, uh, I, I want to get Bobby Sanders on here. And um, he's uh, good friends with Gene. And he we, we believe that he got the last signature from uh, Ronnie Van Zant and Altamont when they uh, went down there and and signed, they had a signing session and actually got a photo of Bobby Sanders. And Bobby, if you're listening, hi man, love you. Uh, we're gonna get you on here and tell and tell that story. And he was really good friends also 
with Leonard Skinner, the uh, the the namesake of the band, and he used to hang out with him. And I believe he played at his funeral. Greg, uh, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Dave Musgrove has a um, a vintage Skinner uh, uh, tribute band that he does very well with, and and we like to get him on here and talk about what it's like to uh, go around doing that. So that's another cool guy we'll have on here. I eventually would like to get Joe Crimp on here. Uh, he's a little shy, but I think I can talk him into it. Joe Crimp is awesome. I mean, he just has so much in his brain and Ron, uh i mean gary and he were like really good friends and he was roommates with uh leon wilkerson and uh gary if you're listening joe misses you man you you, you, you guys need to you guys need to hook up and talk because uh you know i think you guys are such good friends and in your old age you probably ought to hook back up and and uh and get back together and, and and talk about some old times. And I think you both like that. But uh, anyway, hey, Craig, you want to get to some questions? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just kind of curious. Uh, man, I don't want to run these things an hour anymore, you know? Like this last one me and Kathy Godsey did, it was like an hour, and it was like, but – it got it got better the last part of it is the best she she really kind of forgot that we were uh doing a zoom meeting and we were just kind of talking you know and she she forgot we were doing a zoom meeting and she just kind of you know carried on <laughs> you know and uh and i know she ate some one woman told her that she watched half of her podcast <laughs> and a lot of people like you i said did you watch it you go i watched half of it <laughs> i still you, need to finish so, it. I'm, I'm in the you process know, it, it is like i have a hard time sitting down and watching a whole one too when it's an hour long it's, um, i find yeah. out when i watch them even though i'm on it you know i get more information out of it you know it's like i miss stuff that that when you're telling things i like to hear it again because it's it's even better the second time when you're telling well, some of these cool stories. I guess, I guess a lot of people watch, uh, listen to these while they're driving. I know Kathy, she, yeah. you know, she, she listens, she listens to these. And I, I guess they, they like them when they're long. Cause it, you know, it's just, uh, then <laughs> I guess uh, a lot of it, there's so many, like, this is a 30th one. I mean, God, pe people are trying to catch up, you know? Yeah. And, uh, that's and I feel bad. I goes, well, you know, we were just trying to learn how to do them back then. And we'll probably, if we keep continue to do all these, you know, we'll, we'll definitely be a little redundant on some of the subjects. I'm sure we've covered a few subjects a, a few times. Yeah. But, and uh, if anybody you need to get on there and like, and subscribe, everybody that's listening, we appreciate that all except for Freebird family. You can unsubscribe. Uh, yeah, it, you know what? And it's <laughs> funny, but it, it doesn't, I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing, but I just don't think of it, but it doesn't cost anything. I mean, a lot of, right. uh, some of them, you know, you hit uh, subscribe and they'll go, how much you want to donate? You know, this, this ain't one of them. We, we didn't start doing this, but the only, the only thing it does is that it, it, it ups you on the algorithm where more people listen to you and, you know. I guess if we're going to do these, we'd like to reach out to as many Skinnered fans as I said. But but like I say, we we started out doing these for the fake book people, you know. But uh, the only way you can like and subscribe is really, I guess, off of YouTube. Oh, YouTube so page, yeah. you know, I'm not really worried or concerned with it. You know, I'll do them, and you know, I'm I'm kind of amused with the whole situation now. I got I I put the green screen up, but God, I had that thing for a while, and I wanted to do green screen, and and I and and I was looking at all the instructional videos on on lighting and and how you had to light it, you had to light your face, you had to light the screen, you know. And I got the green screen. I got I got. Two seventy-five watt bulbs up there <laughs> that do a great job, and I got five hundred dollars worth of lights here that I don't even use. 
So, so you know, that's we'd that's like to get I'm... a lot, a lot more really guests easy. on here. You know, like Craig's got some ideas on some people that he can get on here that are pretty famous. Uh, we won't mention here, but you know, uh, there's a lot of people that uh, he has in mind, and he's hoping that they'll kind of volunteer to come on. So, if anybody that's listening to this wouldn't mind uh volunteering we'd certainly love to have you <laughs> yeah any, any of you rock star friends of mine that you know that you know waiting for your invitation to the stone roadie show it's like you know i don't uh it's like fake book i've never sent a friend request in my life you know i mean I, I, and all the friends i have that you requested me i didn't request you so if you don't like i can say about your weight problem don't <laughs> <laughs> delete me as your friend you know? what's craig's yeah. taking some flat i know oh. yeah I'm, I'm really doing a great job for my for my stone roadie fan base but it's probably why we don't have many subscribers because I I bash peep fat people and put it out there's fat, but <laughs> well, not everybody, but you know who you are. <laughs> I want to look in your mirror. And you go, why am I so fat? You know, that's what I wonder. Why are you so fat? <laughs> Craig used to be fat, so the way he looks. Yeah, at I lost eighty pounds. He's allowed but, to know, talk I, about. I got brain damage. You know, I, I got brain damage. I can do it. But you can't. Well, that says a lot from you. You know. So, Craig, are you saying <laughs> that if you were once fat, you can make fun of fat because you were once fat? Is it? Well, uh, no, no. I, I feel bad because once you're fat, you feel you feel how miserable you are. Yeah. And how much better you feel when you lose all that fat, you know, it's. Well, you might've just uh, killed a lot of guests coming on. <laughs> but everybody wants to call themselves chubby. I'm not fat, I'm chubby. <laughs> well, you know, a lot of people capitalized off of those Elvis impersonators because they got fat, you know, and they were able to do the fat Elvis. Yeah. Uh, no, America is the is the most obese country on the planet. Gee. That's, a, that's a fact. Man. And that's the truth. America is the a most obese today, country on the planet. If you had a Woodstock today, it would look like a a a, a, a seal <laughs> a, a seal party. If you make it taste good, Americans will eat it. I don't give a shit what it is. <laughs> if you're fat we apologize you know we, you know we love you still i i don't particularly care to, uh, you know if you're fat i got a lot of fat friends and i'm a fat myself so uh i'm working on it craig <laughs> going to get to these questions yeah let's get some questions yeah, we got questions i'm going to name a lot of people here because in case we don't get to all of them uh john nottingham Herb Grewer, I might have butchered that, but I think I got it right. Danny Barron, Jeff Gaeska, maybe that's right. Jim. Oh, Keith. let's take one from yeah. Jeff Gaeska. You want to take good. one from him? Yeah, See, uh, yeah. after Ed left the band, did Ronnie ever have any contact with him? No, I didn't think. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, I remember Ed saying something about. Uh, you know, did he ever lose a love or something? And his wife saying, "Yeah, you did, Ronnie uh, Van Zant. You know, you you uh, never made up with him." So that was one of the things. <laughs> yeah, no. And Dan, how about uh, Johnny John Nottingham? Does Craig have any knowledge on the Leonard Skinner belt buckle that Bon Scott had? I heard he may have gotten it from Gary. Gary, what happened? Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I always heard it was Ronnie got a few of them and had some, but I don't know. I I, know, I, I, know. I wasn't there. I Ron Ackerman's gone. Joe he Crimp. Know. Joe Crimp used to be uh, roommates with Leon, and they came over to Leon and Joe's house. That whole ACDC band. So maybe. Maybe you can clear that up for us, Joe. Get on here, brother. We need you on here. I actually have a couple of those. 
one of them brand new. You probably that's a fake. <laughs> that's no, the John, one. That's what John would say. That was a fake. <laughs> no, I, I actually have a couple of those. Yeah. From the, yeah. Well, yeah, you, need yeah. to, you need to bring it on. I have one that I wear that's tell. got a little bit scratch on it, and then I got another one that's brand new. Cool. I mean, not brand new. It was from the plane. All right. How about uh, Herb Grewer? Craig, can you talk about when Leslie West auditioned after Ed left, and what did Ronnie think of his Leonard? Oh, God, they had, they had Leslie West get up and play a bunch of times because we played a bunch of stuff with the mountain and i don't know there was always some, some rumors that i don't i don't think i i don't think there was ever any um real intent for for leslie west to ever be with Leonard skinner i i, I never got that impression i might be wrong but i never got that impression he just had him play with us a bunch and Leslie West was famous. I mean, you know, um, you know, I mean, you know, if, if, so. if he's there, why not not get have him come up and play some? You know, I mean, you know, he's a rock. I, is he in the Rock Hall of Fame? I doubt it. <laughs> Danny That's Barron. Right. Danny Barron has a question. Hi guys, love the podcast. Well, we appreciate that. Maybe Craig could talk a bit about Ed King. It was. Recently, the anniversary of his passing. How Ed asked Craig to help the band. Gary tells a story about Ed buying Slim Jens and charging the band double the <laughs> price to get one. And Ed, Ed, said, Ed said that was bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Did he? I don't know. That's what I heard. But no, for you people that don't know Ed, you know, well, I kind of went over that, I guess, at the beginning. It's a little bit. Ed hired me, you know, just off the street, really, you know, and uh, here it came here to Akron, Ohio, and I just hung around with him for a few days, and they asked me if I, Ed asked me if I wanted a job. I'm like, doing what, you know? And then some woman from Florida called me and, I, and said, "Hey, you ran into Leonard Skinner. Why don't you meet me in Atlanta for?" New Year's Eve, so I did, and I kind of knew how to get in, you know, from backstage, so I got in and went, went up on stage and said, hey, Ed, <laughs> during the show, and then he took me, uh, he took went and asked Ed or Ronnie if he would hire me, and then Ronnie said, you mean that Yankee, you know, he's a, he's a good, nice guy, but he's a Yankee, you know, I got other friends that, that are in place to do with, you know, and 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 I said, I think he'll work out good. And, and Ronnie said, well, he better. I'm going to kick your ass, you know. So, <laughs> but Ed, I don't remember Ed, Ed ever coming. No, he never did ever come up to me and said, man, you got to, you know, stepped up to the plate and don't get my ass kicked or whatever. He just kind of believed in me. I don't know. Yeah, but me and Ed, I, I was I was close with that because of that reason. He's the one that got me into that. Did you guys ever talk about getting fired? Both of you ever say, you know, ever talk about getting fired from the band? The two of you? Me or Ed? No. Uh -uh. No, Matt, no uh, from what I understand, from what I understand the, the band had a pack. Billy, Billy kind of let it out one time that the band had a pack that that we will never fire Craig Reed. <laughs> but then you, you, uh, they said, uh, what he said was, we, we, we had a pact we'd never fire Craig Reed because it would be bad luck. That's exactly what I heard him say that to the whole band. <laughs> we got uh, a Jim King question, not to be confused with Ed's brother, Jim King. This is another Jim King. Did Donnie and Johnny fight? a lot like Ronnie did or was it just Ronnie I don't know Johnny says they both picked on him you know <laughs> him and I guess him and Donnie picked on Johnny you know that that's the way I always heard it I don't I don't remember um Donnie and I don't remember because one, the only no, time I you know it was Donnie was with 38 and then Johnny was you know uh W w was with Austin Nichols band and they were they were in 
the 38 because we Skinner had to, that that re rehearsal on Riverside Studio, and then 38 Special had the building next to it, and then uh, Johnny Van Zant would would go in there and rehearse when 38 wasn't over there. And, and we were, and I, I remember them just over there playing records, <laughs> just playing along the records, you know, that's, that's wow. you know, yeah. All right. Now, uh, see, uh, Rob Tennis, this might be a, um, a touchy subject, Craig. Uh, you might have to tell the truth and hurt somebody's feelings, or maybe you won't. I don't know. Rob Tennis, Craig in the movie Street Survivors. The true story of the plane crash. How did you feel the movie conveyed the true personalities of the members of the band and crew? Well, the really only the real portrayal that I, I none of the way none of the way they were. Uh, uh, I don't know. I. I Never looked at it that way. I, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, the way I, they portrayed I, I, Ronnie. Uh, you know, remember when Ronnie was like going around and on the plane and stuff. I know we talked about uh, Ronnie on the plane right before it went down. And, you know, you mentioned him walking around and he kind of looked at. Well, you. yeah, that was that that was one scene in particular I, I that set me back in my seat because when Ronnie when when at the, the part where Ronnie looked down at supposedly Artemis, you know, when he looked down at him, that's exactly the way he looked down at me, you know. It, it, because we were we were playing we were it was me and uh, Mark Howard was sitting next to me and then uh, uh, Steve Lawler and I'm not sure who had the fourth place but um, God I lost my train of thought. <laughs> uh, uh, you had actually thought Ronnie came back there to to get you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, because we were we were playing poker, and Billy came back there where we were playing cards, and I was drunk, and every, and we were just we were we were playing for some pretty serious money, and and Billy come but when we they started have uh, 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 thinking about we were going to have some problems with the plane where more than normal uh billy come back and ask one of us if we wanted to change seats and we none of us wanted to put quit playing cards you know so then just uh, 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 uh it's hard to put a time frame on it but it wasn't long after ronnie came back and turned around because i was point, pointed toward the back of the plane Ronnie turned, came back and turned it around like to the front of the plane and looked right down at me. And um, and I thought he was going to ask me to change seats, but he didn't. And he just walked forward. And that's the last I saw him. Yeah. And it wasn't long after that we started, because we were going down that pipeline. And I thought we were going to belly slide it into that pipeline. And I'm laughing about the whole thing you know we're yeah we're gonna slide it in there like mr toad's wild ride you know we'll knock the wings off of it but you know and then for some reason he went for that field i always assumed it was trying to to try to save the airplane you know but um whatever yeah yeah well we did cover that and i can't tell you what podcasts it were but there were several podcasts we did talk about the plane and um there anybody that's interested in that go back and listen because there's some really good information on there steve yeah, jones we've done so we've done so many of these this yeah, is number 30 trying. and yeah. it's like i don't remember that <laughs> and i don't really go back and watch them no, I, I don't remember. i don't you know i a couple of them i've kind of looked at after we did them but, but i don't a, really once we finish watching fan, them and, yeah, I, you said you send them to me and I put them on Facebook and I kind of look at them a little bit as they're editing, but I remember right. what I said. So I don't really watch them that much. Well, when I got this green screen stuff and I kind of 
looked at it to see what it looked like and stuff. Yeah, so if you're a real Skinner fan and you want to, and you just now watching this, it's not all stupid, crazy stuff that we do on here. It don't make sense. There, but some of those podcasts have a lot of great information that Craig has, and other guests have uh, talked about. Steve Jones, you played quite a few times with Joe Walsh, a fellow Ohioan, Ohioan, before he became an Eagle. Any one crazy story you can share about Joe Walsh? Uh, he can't. He, well, he's from Kent, uh, and that's basically where I met the band in Kent, going to the show up there at that hotel, the Holiday Inn. And he and he used to. Uh, got some of my friends worked at gas stations with him and stuff. And, and when we, I was in high school, he played, he just played in the bars up there in Kent and it was just a popular place to go and all those bars up there in Kent, you know, you got drunk but, with him, right? You, and you got high. Uh, with him. I was, I was at bar. I, I got drunk in the same room he was in. I can't, <laughs> I can't say I was with him, but he right. was in when when I was drunk and he was drunk. We were in the same room. <laughs> it wasn't well, like Bon it. Scott. wasn't like Bon Scott. I can actually say I got drunk with him. You know? Maybe but, that's how he got the belt buckle. He stole it from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was during Journey. Yeah, oh, that was okay. when uh, when I was uh, had. A, a few drinks uh, with Bon Scott. A question <laughs> from Chris Waldron. Other than the volunteer jam, did anyone in the band have any encounters with Stevie Ray Vaughn? I'd love to be a fly on the wall while Alan and Stevie jammed together. You know, I remember uh, we played with the Thunderbirds a few times, but I can't really, re uh, you know, a lot of those things. I can't really remember. I, you know, I just can't. I know we played with the Thunderbirds a few times, but I, 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 nothing really stuck out, you know. He's great. I love Stevie Ray, but I just, you know, we played, we played with a lot. You know, we played with all those, you know, B.B. King, Freddie King, and, and <laughs> the, you know, we, every, you can play with everybody. I mean, yeah. I mean, literally. You know, Big name acts opened up for him, and you know, I got limited storage up here anymore. <laughs> I just, I just can't remember some stuff. I, gonna, I remember, you know, I'm going to scoot people. down to the bottom on these questions here because um, a lot of these people they don't get their question in. So, uh, Dan Stanley, what happened to Ronnie's hats? Years ago, someone tried to sell one on Pawn Stars. And I know you know about that. Um, oh yeah, we've we've talked about that. I don't know where they're at. He had two black ones and a <laughs> and a and a and a uh, tan colored one, and none of them had his name in them. And that one that there at Pawn Stars, it it had inscribed Ronnie Van Zandt, and 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 it's the same inscription that they put on the one that says in memory of Ronnie Van Zant and somebody just took acetone and swiped out the in memory of because I know because I had one of those hats and I gave it to a good friend of mine and that's what he did <laughs> you know I know you could tell you could tell that that wasn't Ronnie's hat with the one I had because it was a seven and five eighths and, and I got a big old water head and <laughs> I'll vouch for that. I've got Craig. Griff, right. Yeah, Griff, Griff the, 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 the 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 captain's hat that Griff had to go in search of for me. <laughs> he couldn't get a pilot with a big old water head. <laughs> yeah, how, how I was able to get an actual Delta captain's hat for Craig. We don't want to go to that story. It's 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 kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> and then we got one more question, and then probably ought to call it quits. Correct? Yeah, uh, yeah, we got to be running. Yeah. Long. G uh, uh, Kim Voigt. What about Artemis Pyle? Was he fun to work with? Any good stories about Artemis from back in the day? 
Uh, oh God, me and Artemis, you know, because after Bob left, I, I was Artemis's drum roadie, and I'm really the first drum roadie Artemis ever had. So, yeah, we had a really, you know, Artemis wanted to build a new kit and stuff, and have his own monitors and stuff like I explained before, and I, you know, I helped him put all that together, you know, and oh, we we used to have a blast, man. Me and Artemis, we always wanted to stay in shape. We were both vegetarians and stuff, and. I just remember one time we, we were in Philadelphia and we were staying at the hotel and me and him just jogged over to the gig, you know, <laughs> yeah, just ran over there. You know, it was really cool. But yeah, Artemis, is, you know, we, you know, we, I used to go stay with Artemis and Pat and me, me and Sue and Chad would go and stay in South Carolina with them. And we go mountain climbing and all kind of, we did some pretty crazy mountain climbing with children oh, wow. i mean <laughs> yeah we really did we were going up some pretty uh, chad he was always athletic so i was you know but yeah that was uh pretty wild the stuff we used to do yeah and then then he knew these people in bat cave south carolina and the, and uh when rossington collins got back together with barry harwood and, and um and Randall Hall and Derek Hess and, and and Dale and Billy and Leon and and then at that time Artemis that hadn't hurt his leg. Yeah, we and we were staying up there. Artemis set us up, and we were up there staying in this huge mansion that was built um, out of all the wood from the from the surrounding forest and the only guys that lived there were pot the pot growers <laughs> yeah you had to have four wheel you had to have jeeps to even get up there yeah and we, we were up there rehearsing and the and the, and the weather was getting really bad so we had to leave so we could still get the equipment down down the mountain <laughs> Yeah, all that's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one more here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, oh yeah, uh, part of that question it was um, about Artemis going to get help, and we had uh, Mark Frank and Kenny Peden on here. Um, we haven't had Artemis on here, but they told their side of the story as far as. Uh, yeah 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 no. that's what they said that you know they went with artemis and artemis was actually the leader of the pack you know that he was the one that forged the way you know that kenny said that his arm was bad you know and, and when they went to cross that creek kenny said I, I you know i can't swim you know yeah. so artemis just kind of jumped out in the middle of it said hey it's only waist deep or whatever so they waded across that and then yeah they went up to the farmhouse and kenny said that you know there was a gunshot but he felt that the woman was shooting in the air and yeah, we've come covered all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, Kenny Peden and Mark Frank both were on the podcast. So you might want to go back. You might you have to watch a lot of. Yeah, we need to we need to get Kenny back. He did a really good, yeah. really good thing, especially when he was talking about uh, sitting with Cassie and the reason that Cassie got expired was uh, she was kind of curious as to where the plane was right before the crash and she unbuckled her seatbelt and stood up right when the plane crashed. Happened. Yeah, they actually switched seats because instead of letting her mm -hmm. back by, he just scooted over. And then she stood up, unbuckled her belt, and I guess she could see the ground as the plane was going down and she, had, she wasn't buckled in. So that's that's something I'd never heard. And, and it explains a lot. Uh, so yeah, we need to get all those Kenny and and Mark and Howard and Mark Frank and uh, and we'd really like to get um, uh, Paul Welsh. Yeah, uh, to come on and 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 uh, Mikey Sparks. He he says he'll he'll come on. He he was a, a pretty uh, in, influential uh, member of the organization he he was in the marines with uh 
with Artemis is kind of how he got in, got into that. And then he, after he came on, I, I, I basically quit doing guitars for the band because he was much better at it than me, you know? Uh, uh, but, um, yeah, he's his, him and his wife are putting together a child's, uh, uh, boutique and somewhere in Tennessee and, and selling children's kid clothes and they're just opening it up and he said he was kind of busy for the next couple months but he'd like to do one so he's he actually said that he'd be contacting you soon because I asked him about that story about Alan's Explorer being down there at the studio but he said he wasn't down there at that time when that happened so and then a really good friend of uh, Gary's um, that we've been trying to get on here who actually took care of his horses. Yeah, Tim. <laughs> yeah, Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk to him all the time, yeah. Uh, or not all the time. He usually call, calls me on, on Sundays when he's out on, uh, cooking steaks or whatever on the grill. He calls me. Seems like that's what he calls me. But he calls all right, Greg, you ready to wrap it up? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay, that was the Stone Roadie Show number 30. And uh, may the force be with you. And I think we're going to call that a wrap. And so we'll go out with the same old thing. Happy trails to you until we meet again. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. See you next time. <laughs>